<laughs> What's it like working with your sister on a, on a big movie like this? It's been great. We did the first one together in a bunch of movies before that, so we've been doing it a long time, but it's fun. It's like a family business. And how does that collaborative process work? I, I mean, do you work together a lot on other things as well? or? We, we have, um, and it's always sort of different depending on what our schedules are like of who does what, but it's really, it's really nice when Suzanne was in London for a lot of the movie. I was, you know, called her every day and her, what, caught up and... You know, it's fun. It's nice. It's like I said. It's like any. It's like owning a plumbing shop together, but we're but we're family. But you know, we grew up. I always say we grew up watching the same movies, so our taste is really similar. You know, it's not like it's not like we ever kind of conflict over a big idea or anything. Uh-huh. And what's the appeal of um, Alice in Wonderland and obviously the, this second follow-up film? What's the appeal for you in terms of bringing that to the screen? I, there's a lot to me. I mean, I love the character. I love what Linda Wolverton, the screenwriter, had brought us the idea of kind of. Making the, taking the character but making her a little bit o- older and going through sort of uh, the problems of being a modern woman in, in a pre-modern world. And, uh, and I, love, I love a lot of this current film. I love what it says about family. I love what it says about not wasting time. And I love that it's about a woman who thinks outside of the box. You know, I think it's all cool. And it felt like because this story is possibly less well known uh, than uh, Alice in Wonderland, that you had a bit more opportunity Hello, to play with different ideas. Is that fair? It is fair. Although we did play, uh, Linda did play quite a bit with the first one. I mean, it's obviously the the idea of the character and, and and her intention is the same. But yes, we sort of have some new characters. Sasha's character doesn't exist in the Lewis Carroll version, but um, but yeah, we had fun. It's fun. But everything we try to do is in the Carolian spirit, you know. And when creating such a big character as Sasha's character, it's such a big, um, big part of the movie. Yeah. Um, how, how do you go about thinking of someone like that? And was Sasha always in, in mind when, when developing that? He was because James, our director, had worked a lot um, with Sasha. So it kind of, right as it was conceived, it was sort of like he would be kind of the perfect idea. And he's so fun and, and he did so much with it. And he has such great chemistry with the other actors, with Mia and John and Helena. Like, they're just so fun to watch together. He's, he's, he's really remarkable, so. It feels like we get more development for um, Johnny's character as well this time around because we see different facets of the Hatter. We do. We learned a lot more about the Hatter. We learn about his family and kind of his backstory and actually kind of what made him crazy in the first place. And it's really sweet because we learn more about his relationship with Alice. It's interesting that obviously you mentioned your sister. There's an interesting sibling relationship in this film as well. There is. She was just telling me how she's the white queen and I'm, I guess that makes me the red queen, but that's okay. Yeah, no, it's fun. I love the, I love the forgiveness. I, I love that it's about the Hatter's family and it's about the, the white queen and the Red Queen's uh, family as well. I think that's really cool. It, it kind of makes it so there's no outright villain in the film as well, which I think is quite interesting. Is what I'm sorry? There's no outright villain in the film. No, that's what's so fun is you find out why the Red Queen was, was so mean and angry all these years, you know? She had this accent, she just she just wanted to tell her side. And I always love a story. You know, any good story, the villain has to be like three-dimensional and you have to kind of understand what makes them bad, you know, so you, you understand. Excellent. And do you think there are many more stories to tell in this world then? I'm not sure it'd be fun to keep making them. They're such a blast to make, but, uh, you know, depend on how this one performs at the box office, I guess. Do you look to do something completely different then next uh, before you might even think about coming back to it? Well, it's really up to, it's, it's you know, you kind of can't plan for these things. It's how they come together and how an idea for the next one would come. So I wish to say I'd have more control over it, but I don't. It takes, it takes a village of people to make these decisions. So, but it would be fun. I would love to do another one. Excellent. And finally, can I just ask you, what's like working within the big Disney family? because it does feel like a very big collaborative process. It is. Well, they're, they're, they're the best at these kind of at understanding um, sort of the cross-marketing of these movies and what they can do with them. And I think, you know, I think the Disney brand, you know, is stronger than ever as far as like the mark on the movies and what it represents to people going to see things in the cinema. So I think it's, it's fantastic to look at I mean, like, it. It's, it's awesome. You know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.